Good morning. Uh, the Lord be with you this, the Feast of the Holy Trinity. Uh, the order of service is Divine Service Setting 3, found on page 184. Uh, just a couple of notes about the service first, before I forget. Uh, uh, our first communion hymn, 505, uh, it has option of just doing one stanza or uh, three stanzas, one for each uh, person of the Trinity. We will do uh, the, the stanzas three in italicized, so please uh, mark that. So we'll do that three times through um, as it is printed. Also, since it is uh, Holy Trinity, uh, in, lo in place of the Nicene Creed, we will be uh, praying uh, and confessing the Na Athanasian Creed, which is found on page one, or on 319. Uh, when we do that, we will uh, confess that responsibly by whole verse. So I will begin with the odd, and then the congregation will take over with the even. So uh, keep your eye on that. Uh, and we will stand for that, that will take place uh, in place of the Nicene Creed right after the reading of the Gospel. So keep that in mind. All right. Other than that, everything is as usual. So we begin uh, with our opening hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. 
I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in this stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity and the undivided unity. Let us give glory to him because he has shown us his mercy to us. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and infants you have established strength. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him? and the Son of Man, that you care for him. Yet you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings, and crowned him with glory and honor. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity and the undivided unity. Let us give glory to Him because He has shown His mercy to us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will toward men. We praise Thee, we bless Thee, we worship Thee, we glorify Thee, we give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory. O Lord God, Heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. 
Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us grace to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity by the confession of a true faith and to worship the unity and the power of the divine majesty. Keep us steadfast in this faith and defend us from all adversities. For you, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, live and reign, one God now and forever. The Old Testament for the Feast of the Holy Trinity is written in the prophet Isaiah, the sixth chapter. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings. With two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the thresholds shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Blessed are you, O Lord, who beholds the deep and who dwells between the cherubim. Blessed are you, O Lord, in the firmament of heaven, and greatly to be praised forever. The epistle is written in St. Paul's letter to the church in Rome, the 11th chapter. O oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God! How unsearchable are His judgments! And how inscrutable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? Or who has given him a gift that he might be repaid? For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We stand. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. Glory 
Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you the teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness to what we have seen, but you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in Him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. We confess our faith according to the Athanasian Creed found on page 319, and we confess it responsibly by whole verse. Whoever desires to be saved must above all hold the Catholic faith. And the Catholic faith is this. For the Father is one person, the Son is another, and the Holy Spirit is another. Such as the Father is, such is the Son, and such is the Holy Spirit. The Father uncreated, the Son uncreated, the Holy Spirit uncreated. The Father infinite, the Son infinite, the Holy Spirit infinite. The Father eternal, the Son eternal, the Holy Spirit eternal. And yet there are not three eternals, but one eternal. In the same way, the Father is Almighty, the Son Almighty, the Holy Spirit Almighty. And yet there are not three Almighties, but one Almighty. For the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God. And yet there are not three gods, but one God. For the Father is Lord, the Son is Lord, the Holy Spirit is Lord. Just as we are compelled by the Christian truth to acknowledge each distinct person as God and Lord, so also are we prohibited by the Catholic religion to say that there are three gods or lords. The Son is neither made nor created, but begotten of the Father alone.
Thus there is one Father, not three fathers, one Son, not three sons, one Holy Spirit, not three Holy Spirits. But the whole three persons are co-eternal with each other and co-equal, so that in all things, as has been stated above, the Trinity in unity and unity in Trinity is to be worshipped. But it is also necessary for everlasting salvation that one faithfully believe the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is God, begotten from the substance of the Father before all ages, and He is man, born from the substance of His mother in this age. equal to the Father with respect to His divinity, less than the Father with respect to His humanity. One, however, not by the confusion of the divine uh, divinity into flesh, but by the assumption of the humanity into God. For as the rational soul and flesh is one man, so God and man is one Christ. Who suffered for our salvation, descended into hell, and rose again the third day from the dead. Ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, God Almighty, from whence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And those who have done good will enter into eternal life, and those who have done evil into eternal fire. This is the gift of faith. Whoever does not believe it faithfully and firmly
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. Every year, right on the heels of Pentecost, the day when we celebrate the fulfilling of Jesus' promise to send the Holy Spirit, we gather. We gather to celebrate the blessed Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Today we glorify the one and only God, who is love, perfect, or who is love, perfect, divine love. Contrary to popular belief and the all-too-common error of which I have been guilty of perpetuating myself, the biblical Greek word agape, or love, divine love, does not mean unconditional love. Rather, it means perfect divine love. Agape is the word that describes the love that is from God, who He is. Now, I know that some of you may be shocked to hear me say that agape is not unconditional. The simplest example of agape not being unconditional is that there is a hell and that there are people in it by God's judgment. If God's love was unconditional, then it wouldn't matter what one does. All would automatically get into heaven, and hell would be empty. But as we are clearly told in the Bible, hell has way too many souls being tormented in it. And as St. Paul reminds us, how unsearchable are God's judgments, and how inscrutable His ways. So what is it? What is it to have a God who is love? What is perfect, divine, agape love? It is this. The selfless, self-giving, sacrificial love that is perfectly exemplified in the person and work of Jesus Christ. Jesus, who was promised and sent by the Father from eternity and who is declared and delivered to us sinners by the Holy Spirit so that by faith in Him we would have forgiveness, life, and salvation. This is agape love. This is divine love. This forgiveness, life, and salvation are indeed given by grace. But the grace of God can never be understood to be free. Too often, That is exactly how agape and God's grace through Jesus Christ is received and treated cheaply. We truncate or cut short the entirety of God's love for us men. We are quick to grab hold of the truth that we are saved by grace through faith and not by works, lest anyone should boast. But this then does not mean that salvation is somehow free. It does not mean the grace of God for us sinners is free. The faith that saves us, that is graciously given to us, must grab hold of something, or rather someone, and what He did for us and our salvation. Our sin, which was first committed by Adam and Eve at the beginning, and which we have inherited and willingly contributed to sins requires that a debt be exacted against us and all men. It is no inconsequential thing that we have disobeyed the simple and plain life-creating, life-giving word. When one forsakes this life and its source, the only thing that must remain, which really isn't a thing, is death the absence of life. We are left with a debt, an eternal one, the absence of what is real. Left as they could have been, that debt was to be paid by Adam and Eve and by us. For the day you eat of it, you shall surely die, the Lord said. Yet we didn't. Adam and Eve did not die immediately that day. So what gives? Did God just ignore the transgression? Did God turn a blind eye and pretend that everything was copacetic? No. 
He loved them perfectly and divinely. Adam and Eve and their offspring died that day, and that is not what God wanted. He created life and wanted nothing more than that life to perpetuate, to continue on. But now it was all ruined, destroyed by, the, by of all creatures, the ones fashioned in His own image, and to whom He had gifted everything to. They were now untethered from God and His Word. They had left it, abandoned it. And He loved them, though entirely, in spite of it. Not because of them, because of His choice, His love for them. He would have been justified to execute them, to scrap the whole loving project, but He doesn't. By worldly wisdom, He is a fool for not doing so. But instead, He, en he enters the mess. He gets messy. He gets dirty. He goes for a walk in the cool of the day and He calls out to Adam, what is God's intention in doing so? Did he not know where Adam was and what he had done? Well, of course he knew. But he had a plan. A loving plan. Now, Adam does not follow the prompts as he should have. His new state of being rendered him a foolish ignoramus. Instead of owning his sin, his fall, he blames Eve. Nay, no, he blames Eve. God Himself. He blames God for giving Him His own helpmeet. Oh, the arrogance! For that one would expect a world-ending backhand, but God doesn't even flinch. He moves down the order of creation and gets to the serpent, and it is there. There, at the foot of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, it is there where it all comes together. There is where it all is declared. God's agape, His perfect divine love. For there at the base of that tree in the garden, all were gathered together. Creation was, as it were, then and there, the throne room of God. Now remember, it was God, the Father, who spoke at the beginning. And He spoke that eternal word, the, the Logos. And it was the hovering wind of the Holy Spirit that hovered over the waters of the deep. They were all there. They were all there at creation. It's where He resided. The serpent was there too now, that day of the fall. The serpent, also known as Satan, the accuser. He who accuses God and who accuses fallen man is also there at the tree Think of this all as one big courtroom. We have the judge in the Father, we have the prosecutor in Satan, and we have the defendant in Adam. And Adam is terrified, and rightly so. His puny and pathetic fig leaves vaporize in the Almighty's presence, and he is exposed, naked in both body and soul. Woe is me, for I am lost. For I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Yes, yes, I know. This confession is not Adam's, but the prophet Isaiah's from our Old Testament this morning. Yet these words might as well have been in Adam's mouth, and they ought always to be in ours, too. For the throne room of God is something we do not talk about nearly enough. It is that place of God's glory. It is where God sits ruling His kingdom, the kingdom of His creation. In His throne room, is, is, in, in His throne room, it is there where God and His love, His agape, His perfect divine love is executed. Where He executes his gracious and merciful will for us, for you, for me. It is in God's throne room where the Almighty sits at all times. He sits 
contrary to popular belief, not to capriciously and selfishly demand tributes from his citizens, but rather to love, to give entirely of himself for the sake of those whom he loves most dearly. It is in the throne room of God that the Father is not alone. And here is a mystery. God is one God, one eternal essence and substance, but there is also three persons, distinct persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This has always been and always will be. It is this community of persons in one Godhead that is the source and substance of God being love. He is perfectly sufficient in Himself, in and of Himself. He doesn't need external sources to charge His batteries or to be the source of His love for us. He is love in Himself. And so He lacks nothing. He therefore has then everything to give. It moves. He moves in one direction for the benefit of of the lover, us, his creation. Because he is this way, he created everything. And, and he then ordered it as it should be, according to his divine wisdom. And then he gives it all. Gives it all away. He gives it to Adam and Eve. He was never going to keep it for himself. He didn't need it. He desired to give it all away. When the fall into sin happened, God did not change. He is immutable. He cannot change. He was not going to throw a tantrum, take his creation and storm off to eternity before time and space was like a toddler with his toys. Instead, in keeping with his nature, his nature is love, of sacrificial, self-giving love, he continued to give give of himself. The Father in perfect love looked at Adam, Adam who looked exactly like him, and then he looked at his son and saw the one there in the courtroom who looked, whose image Adam was made in. The love that was between the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that created man is the same love that would, at the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, redeem man, save man, buy him back from his debt. The seed of the woman would be promised, promised to come, and he would crush the serpent's head while bruising the he his heel in death. God would not require the death of man. That would not be enough. Instead, he would sacrifice himself, his own eternal son, and his life. He would be born of the Virgin Mary, and in him, God and man would be one. He, is, he in our place, would then die, once and for all, and he would do so perfectly for us. When Isaiah is brought into the throne room of God, he is terrified, and he should be. His sins are too much to bear. Nothing he could imagine would touch what his sins deserved and required. Upon his confession, the, serp, the seraphim takes a pair of tongs and takes a burning coal from the altar, from the mercy seat of God, when that coal touches, touches Isaiah's lips, he is cleansed. He is forgiven. He is made to no longer be afraid. That burning hot coal is the sacrifice. The sacrifice that has been made. It is the fierce agape love of God it is Jesus suffering and dying a most horrific death by crucifixion. The burning hot wrath of the Father that is deserved by us all. That He stayed there in the garden 
instead of putting on us, is endured by the Son of God. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that through, the, through Him He might save them. In the order of salvation, God sacrificed Himself in our place. His love for us men was by no means free. It cost Him everything. Believe it. Receive it. Everything that God has, including His image and likeness, male and female, is gifted to us in His perfect divine love. Everything in His Holy Word is delivered to us as pure gift, paid for with the very blood of God. Nothing in the Bible which tells us who God is for us is incidental. It is certainly not optional or excusable. All is good, right, and salutary. All is given to us by the God who is love. When we would not receive the Bible as the delivery of God's love toward us, we turn from Him. We turn from God, the God who is love, who in love said, let there be light, who said, let us make man in our own image and let us give it to Him. When we turn to forbidden fruit and lies of the serpent, the serpent who, with his questions, asked, did God really say... When we do so, when we turn from God's Word, we turn from life. We turn from salvation. We turn to death, to nothing, and its eternal torment. The thing with God's perfect divine love is that it always gives, but it never forces its reception. God will be persistent and forbearing, but not forever. According to His will, His judgment, He does with a heavy heart let the unrepentant, the unbelieving, go their way at a time. If one wishes not to receive the gracious gift of God, the perfect loving sacrifice of Jesus, then salvation is forbidden. But know that God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit by no means desires this for anyone. He longs for the salvation of all by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, the crucified. When we are tempted or have wandered off the straight and narrow or fallen into the snare of the enemy, in love, He places into our ears His holy word. He sends us pastors and fellow Christians to declare to us the gift of Jesus, the word of God made flesh. God sends us prophets to pull us back into the throne room of God because it is there that the verdict is sure and certain. We are declared innocent for Jesus' sake. His eternal life is exchanged for our eternal death. Jesus dies for us and then we live forever. All that would separate us from God and one another is fully restored in that room, in God's presence. And He is the only one doing everything. All we do is simply receive it. Receive it all as the eternal precious gift that it is. And we receive it by faith. So let us this day rejoice. Rejoice in the Holy Trinity who saves us out of His perfect divine love his agape, who purchased that love and our salvation, not with gold or silver, but with the precious blood and innocent suffering and death of Jesus. Let us rejoice and receive what Jesus has done and which the Holy Spirit delivers through the Word and the sacraments, giving to us forgiveness of sins and the strengthening of our faith. Let us let us this day have the coal of Jesus' body and blood touch our lips. 
making us clean and holy, giving us lips to confess the one true faith, to confess and believe that we are indeed forgiven. For apart from this, apart from this Catholic faith, a faith that is judged forgiven in Jesus, one cannot be saved. In Jesus' name, amen. We stand for prayer. Now the peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. We rise for prayer. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord of hosts, we worship you not as we ought, but as we are able, within the frailty of our minds and hearts that still struggle against sin and unbelief. Guard us by your Spirit that we may not grow weary nor lose sight of the goal before us. Work in us to display the good works of him who has called us from darkness into his marvelous light. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of hosts, have mercy on those who would deny the new birth of water and the Spirit to infants and children. Open their eyes and hearts to fulfill to the fullness of your grace that they would not no longer hinder these little ones from being born again and seeing your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of hosts, you have established marriage and sanctified the home to be a place of blessing and love. Give to parents and children the, encourage, uh, the courage to love as you have loved. You have loved us. Unite them in their common life by your spirit to know Jesus and serve him. Bless the single with chastity, comfort the widowed, protect the orphan, and defend the helpless. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of hosts, we thank you for the many blessings you have bestowed upon this nation. Grant us a long memory to recall those who gave the full measure of devotion to our country's peace and security. Bring to mind the sacrifices of those who served faithfully 
unto death in the protection of our freedom and in the defense of our country. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of hosts, uphold Cheryl Krieger, David Rathke, Detlef Pete S. Mewson, Donna Trubach, and all those who suffer in our midst by your truth, that since you are at their right hand, they cannot be shaken. Gladden their hearts, cause their tongues to rejoice, and make their flesh dwell in hope. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of hosts, you have revealed yourself to us in Christ, that we may know you by faith and confess you before the world. Give us your spirit, that all churches may confess truly and faithfully your word and live in harmony of doctrine and life in anticipation of that day when we shall kneel before or together at your altar. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we poor sinners confess that in our flesh dwells no good thing. If we are left to ourselves, we will die in sin since that which is born of flesh is flesh and cannot see the kingdom of God. Grant us, we implore you, your grace and mercy for the sake of Jesus Christ. Send your Holy Spirit into our hearts to regenerate us, that we may firmly believe the forgiveness of sins according to your promise in baptism and daily increase in Christian love and good works until at last we obtain eternal salvation. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you. Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, who with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit are one God, one Lord, in the confession of the only true God, we worship the Trinity in person and the unity in substance of majesty co-equal. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. O oh Christ, our Lamb of God, Take us away, body of Christ, take it for you. body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith, throughout this life and the life to come. You cause you God's peace, your sins are forgiven. the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith throughout this life and the life to come. You find in God's peace, your sins are forgiven.
blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the strength that is reserved for the ones who sin, who in this life and the life to come, who are blind to God's peace, your sins are forgiven. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. Let us pray. O oh God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent Your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank You that for His sake You have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask You not to forsake Your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and to be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.
You may be seated. The Lord's blessings to you again this Holy Trinity Sunday. Uh, we'll let you out of here before the rain starts coming. So, um, uh, blessings to you. Uh, last week with Confirmation and Pentecost, I totally forgot to mention that uh, the previous Monday uh, at our voters meeting, we uh, unanimously decided to go forward with the school. So, uh, be looking for more information as we get that ball rolling uh, and uh, get the get the things uh, really moving now that we have officially started the school. So it kind of started last Monday. So it started. It's kind of terrifying and exciting at the same time. So uh, we've got a lot of work ahead of us. And uh, keep, keep us in our, your prayers. Uh, uh, one of the, the struggles and the, the most difficult part is going to be finding an administrator and teachers. Uh, I think everything else actually might be so much easier. Uh, but uh, keep that endeavor in your prayers. Uh, that uh, there would be those out there who might be moved uh, to take up the, that mantle, that challenge of uh, starting a new classical Lutheran school here in Port Washington. So uh, also uh, pray uh, that your hearts may be inclined to also offer up uh, service towards the school for volunteering, as well as uh, we always need money um, uh, for the, the, the blessing of this school that it might go forward. Uh, can't do anything for free in this world, unfortunately. Uh, not even lunch, I guess. That's what I say. What I say. So, um, so please uh, uh, pray about that as we move forward in the next year and a half. So, um, if you have any questions about the school, we have a packet. I'm sure it'll be changing as the year goes along. But if you have any questions, talk on, talk to me or Conrad Rosnick, and we will get you uh, get you an answer one way or another. So, uh, we look forward to that. Um, Next Sunday, before I forget, next Sunday is our outdoor service on the patio. So uh, bring your lawn chairs if you want. Otherwise, you get uh, those plastic chairs. But I guess we do have those pink cushions. So uh, weather permitting will be on there. Uh, the way the weather has been recently, who knows? Uh, since I've been here, I think uh, 